Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. Pedals come with a ton of terminology attached, and if you watch a lot of gear videos, the presenters often dish out the jargon as if you already know what it means, myself included. Many of you have quite rightly asked about clipping. Some like it hard, some like it soft, and a little bit of symmetry goes a long way, but what's it all about? Well, with the help of the brand new Warris Audio Aegis Overdrive pedal, which features five different gain and clipping arrangements, we can get to the bottom of it so that you can no longer be too afraid to ask. A drive pedal will generate its distortion in a two-stage process. Firstly, it uses amplification to increase the signal gain, and then clips the signal to achieve the desired level of distortion. A signal clips when the signal voltage exceeds the voltage threshold of the component that it's travelling through, similar to how a tall vehicle will have its roof torn off if it travels under a low bridge. This seemingly abrupt decapitation of the waveform creates a lot of high order harmonic content which we hear as distortion. While clipping of the waveform may begin in the op amp, where the amount of gain applied takes the signal beyond the voltage that the amplification chip can reproduce, when talking about clipping in drive pedals, we're more commonly talking about the secondary process of using clipping diodes with low forward voltages to intentionally clip the waveform. It's these diodes, what materials are made from, and how they're arranged that really define the sound of a distortion pedal. This works because diodes are devices that block the flow of current for any voltage below a certain threshold. The forward voltage of a diode is the voltage at which the diode will turn on and begin conducting. If a guitar signal has a voltage lower than the forward voltage of a diode connected to ground, then the signal will pass to the output unchanged by the diode as there's not enough voltage for the diode to begin conducting. However, a guitar signal with a voltage higher than the forward voltage of the clipping diode will see the excess voltage carried to ground, conducted away by the diode, leaving a clipped signal to reach the output. Diodes also only let current flow in one direction, and since our guitar signals are AC, constantly flipping back and forth between positive and negative voltages, we need two diodes to clip both halves of the waveform, one for the positive semicycle and one for the negative semicycle. If both diodes have the same forward voltage, then we will get symmetric clipping. Both halves of the waveform will be clipped by the same amount. If each diode has a different forward voltage, then we will get asymmetric clipping. Each half of the waveform will be clipped by a different amount. The arrangement of the clipping diodes within the circuit has a huge effect over the final result. The diodes can either be placed after the amplification stage and connect to ground, which results in hard clipping, or they can be placed within the feedback loop of the amplification stage, which results in soft clipping. Hard clipping is only concerned with the output level, when the difference between the output voltage of the signal and ground is greater than the forward voltage of the diode, then the signal will be clipped to the level of the diode's forward voltage. This is a severe method of clipping which produces a hard transition, or knee to use the professional terminology, between the unclipped and clipped part of the waveform, producing a lot of distortion. Soft clipping is a little more nuanced. Because the diodes sit in the feedback loop of the op amp, they are more concerned with the ratio between the input and output signal levels. When the difference between the output voltage and input voltage is greater than the forward voltage, the diode conducts and clips the signal. This means that clipping is only being applied to the signal increases, not the signal as a whole, producing a much softer knee between unclipped and clipped sections of the waveform, generating much less distortion. Soft clipping is often associated with pedals that refer to themselves as overdrives, like the Tube Screamer, while hard clipping is more likely to be found in pedals that align themselves with the identity of distortion, like the DS1 or the Procore Rat. But this is by no means written in stone. For example, the Big Muff uses multiple cascading soft clipping arrangements to generate its extreme fuzz-like distortion, while the Clon Centaur, despite the confusing tagline of transparent overdrive, actually uses hard clipping germanium diodes with low forward voltages. But those are stories for another time. Walrus Audio's Aegis contains both soft clipping and hard clipping arrangements of symmetric silicon diodes, as well as a soft clipping symmetric LED arrangement with very different forward voltage characteristics. As the amount of clipping done by the diodes is directly influenced by the gain level of the preceding amplifier stage, Aegis has both low and high gain modes to push the clipping differently. 
Other very interesting aspects of this pedal include an active bass control which sits before the gain stage, allowing you to decide how much bass frequency content travels through the distortion. This allows you to attenuate for tighter, more cutting distortion sounds, or let a little more bass frequencies pass through to add girth to single coil pickups. Note that this isn't just adding bass frequencies, this is deciding how low the distortion goes. The dry control mixes some of the unaffected dry signal back into the output of the pedal, lending a more articulate drive when using this stacked with other overdrives and distortions, something I think this pedal is really designed well to do. Also it has a rad multi-trunked elephant screen print, so let's see how the sound size up against the mammoth-like visage. by looking at this pedal on its own, running into the clean channel of the amplifier. At this stage I'll have the dry control set completely off, so we're hearing 100% of the pedal. The first two modes are the low gain settings, switching between either silicon diodes or LEDs in a soft clipping arrangement. All that's changing here is the forward voltage of the clipping diodes, so listen carefully for what effect that has. You'll notice that the LEDs sound louder and less compressed than their silicon counterparts. The higher forward voltage means that more of the signal can pass before it's being clipped. This gives more headroom and dynamic range with LED clipping. Let's take a look at what difference increasing the op-amp gain makes. We're going to stick with the silicon diodes and jump between modes 1 and 3. All that's changing here is how much amplification is occurring prior to clipping. Although the clipping diodes have remained the same, the bigger increase between input and output to the op amp has meant that the clipping diodes have more of an effect. It's also possible that in high gain mode the op amp is starting to clip the signal on its own, so that will be adding to what we hear. Now let's hear the difference between soft clipping and hard clipping using the silicon diodes. <laughs> Now that's all well and good for a scientific comparison of clipping, but when you see a pedal like this, which has an array of clipping options and a dry blend knob, it's not really intended to be used on its own in front of a clean amplifier. These features indicate that the Aegis is more at home stacking with other overdrives and distortions or being used as a boost into an already distorting guitar amp, and I think that's where the Aegis really starts to shine. Being able to switch between silicon and LED clipping for additional headroom and blending some of that dry signal back into the gain staging beyond allows us to fine tune just how much effect this overdrive is having. <laughs> Thank you. 
preference the additional headroom provided by the LED clipping works wonders in the stacking configuration and whether high or low gain on the pedal really comes down to how much distortion I'm using at the amp that follows it. This also factors into how much I'm using the blend control. All of these options mean that no matter what guitar or amplifier you're using alongside this pedal you can dial it in for optimum performance having as much or as little from the overdrive as you like. The sounds here are all huge, living up to that elephantine graphic, and it's an incredibly interesting overdrive pedal if you're into stacking drives together. While well, I don't consider any of the sounds here to be anything special on their own beyond a functional and well-featured overdrive, it's when used in conjunction with following gain stages this really comes to life, offering enormous control to craft unique and interesting distortion sounds. If you want to grab one of these for yourself then links will be in the description below and remember to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. And if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the windy. Keep it loud and stay safe. Aye, uh, features to you and all.